Hello, and welcome to the Additive Manufacturing Module in ThermoCalc Software. This video will help you get started using the module by walking you step by step through a common workflow. By the end of this video, you should be able to set up your own simulations in the Additive Manufacturing Module, also known as the AM Module. A standard workflow in the module includes setting up your material system, generating the materials property data from the built-in Shio calculator, running a steady state simulation, which is the most basic simulation type, and will save you time by allowing you to test your setup before moving on to more complex, time-consuming simulations. And finally, running more advanced simulations, such as those listed on the screen. We will go through all of these steps in this video. The simulations in this video can be run by anyone with a license for ThermoCalc 2023B or newer, and a license for the Additive Manufacturing Module. The Additive Manufacturing Module cannot be run in the free educational package. If you do not have a license for the AM Module, but you are using ThermoCalc 2023B or newer, there are other calculation examples included in your software that you can run. From the home screen of the software, click the Example Files icon, then select the Additive Manufacturing folder. You can run examples AM1, 2, 3, and 6B. This video is based on example AM04. The calculations in this video use the TI64 alloy, and the titanium-based alloys database, TCNI5. But I give instructions throughout this video for how you can set up your own calculation if you're working with a different material and have a different database. Let's get started. Step one, set up your material system. There are two ways to set up calculations in the additive manufacturing module. The first, which we will not use in this video, is to use the Materials Library template from the home screen of the software. This is an easy way to set up an additive manufacturing simulation, but it requires materials libraries to run the simulations. The software is shipped with several common additive manufacturing alloys, and users can save their own materials, which we will show you how to do in this video. Once you save your materials in the software, you can use this method to save time and ensure consistency in the future. The second method, which we will use, is to use the Additive Manufacturing Template. So click on that template to begin our simulation. This gives us all the nodes we need to run an Additive Manufacturing Calculation, and we will discuss each node. First, we'll set up our system. So select the System Definer node. From the Databases drop-down menu, select the TCTI5 database, or whichever database you are working with. Next, select the elements Titanium, Aluminum, and Vanadium, or select the elements in your material. Under Material Amount, set Aluminum to 6 and Vanadium to 4 mass percent. This automatically sets Titanium to 90 totaling 100% of the system. If you're working with a different material, enter your system. Our system is now set, so we'll move on to step two. Step two, generate the materials property data from the Shio calculator. Select the Shio calculator node. The Shio calculator is used to generate the materials property data that will be used in the additive manufacturing simulations. The Shio calculator in the Additive Manufacturing Module template is the same as the Shio calculator found throughout the software, but it is configured to generate the data necessary for the AM calculation. It's configured to start the simulation at a temperature of 5,000 degrees and capture the evaporation and calculate the material properties down to room temperature. Additionally, in the Advanced Options tab, Calculate Evaporation Properties has been checked, and Include One Axis Equilibrium Calculation is unchecked. If you add a Shio calculator manually from the System Definer, you'll need to change these settings yourself. 
We'll accept the default settings the program gives us for the shile. We will now perform the shile calculation before we move on to the additive manufacturing calculator. Right click on the shile calculator node and click perform now to run the shile simulation. You can pause this video while the simulation runs. Once the simulation is complete, click on the AM calculator node, then click on the materials properties tab to see the materials property data that was obtained from Shile. The materials property tab allows you to select the data source that will be used in your additive manufacturing simulations. If you click on the use data from drop down menu, you can choose either Shile or library. Shile uses the Shile results that we just calculated, and Library uses the data that was shipped with the software or calculated data that you save to the library. For this example, we will use Shile, so select that from the drop-down list. You can save your materials to use them later by clicking the Save As button and choosing a suitable name. I will name this material TI64 and click OK. If you do this, you can start with the With Material Library template for future simulations. This tab is also where we view the plots for the properties data we just generated. This materials data will be used in our AM simulations. If you click on the Plot drop-down menu, you can see all the materials properties that will be used in the simulation. You can click through these and view the plots in the visualization window. For example, density, thermal conductivity, and surface tension. Before you run the AM calculator, it's important that the data you will base the AM calculation on does not have any sharp peaks or curves to be able to solve the numerical problem. To avoid this, you can apply smoothing to your data. To determine how much smoothing to apply, you can plot the different properties and look at the plots. For example, apparent heat capacity shows a sharp peak. The default setting is little smoothing, but this can be changed depending on your simulation. However, we recommend that you run the simulations with the default of little smoothing first, so we will use that. If the calculation fails, you can increase the smoothing and try again. These settings will be saved with your material if you choose to save them. Step 3. Set up a steady state simulation. Once you've looked through the plots, we can set up our additive manufacturing simulation. So click on the Conditions tab. There are three calculation types in the AM module, and we will start by making a steady state calculation. This is the simplest calculation type and gives a good overview of your melt pool dimensions. A standard workflow would be to run this simulation first to make sure your data works in the program and then run increasingly complex simulations, which we will do in this video. Steady state does not solve a time-dependent problem. Instead, it is assumed that the temperature distribution and the fluid flow around the heat source is in steady state and does not change with time when moving the heat source with a constant scan speed. Below calculation types, we have the global settings, which are the general settings for the simulation. Here you can change the gas pressure and the temperature of the chamber, as well as the temperature of the base plate if you use a heated base plate in your process. We will use the default setting in our simulation, but you should set it to match your setup. Next, you set the geometry and the coarseness of the mesh. The height refers to the height of the build. When you change this, you can see it reflected in the visualizations window. The grid you see on the domain is the mesh of the finite element model. We will use the default height of 2 mm, but you can change this if your height is different. The mesh is adaptive, which means that the software automatically uses a finer mesh where it is necessary. For example, closer to the heat source where we have higher temperature gradient. We will use the default setting for this as well, so make sure your settings match mine or set the geometry of your system. 
Next, we will set the heat source settings and the scanning speed. There are three heat source models, which you can read about in our online help. You can also import experimental melt pool data and calibrate your own heat source parameters, beginning in ThermalCalc 2024A. We will use Gaussian with a heat source power of 100, an absorptivity of 40%, and a beam radius of 100 micrometer. Set your calculation to match the heat source of your machine. We will use a scanning speed of 600 millimeters per second and power layer thickness of 55 micrometer. In the visualizations window, the dark blue layer represents the powder and the gray block represents the solid substrate. Once again, set these to your specifications if they are different. We will leave the rest as it is, so right click on the AM Calculator 1 node and click Perform Now to only perform the AM simulation. You can pause this video while the simulation runs. Once the simulation is complete, click on the Plot Renderer 1 node. We will keep the default settings, so click Perform at the bottom center of the screen to show the results of our simulation. Once the simulation is done, we can see the results in the Visualizations window. There are various plot types, and the first we see is a 3D plot. The 3D plot shows how the temperature varies in the build part in the form of a color map. Click the Zoom to Heat Source Position button to zoom to the heat source position. The arrows in the plot demonstrate the fluid flow in the liquid, and the contour lines, which are green, show the solidus and liquidus lines. Hence, the mushy zone is the volume between the two contour lines. As we can see, the arrows, which are the glyph showing the fluid flow in the liquid, are too large to distinguish, so we can change the glyph scale factor to 0.3 to get a better view. This plot makes it easy to measure the size of the melt pool. To measure the melt pool, click the Show Size of the Melt Pool button from the top panel. The measurements appear in the plot as green lines and white numbers. You can also measure the size of the melt pool plus mushy zone by clicking the Show Size of the Melt Pool plus mushy zone button. The measurements appear as yellow lines and white numbers. The results are also shown in the event log, where you can copy the information to store it elsewhere. The results only show half of the build part, but you can easily show the entire part by clicking the Mirror Geometry button. In the Plot Renderer, you have a second tab named Plot Over Line. This plot demonstrates how the properties vary along a line. To add this plot, click the Plot Over Line tab in the Configuration window, then check the box next to the plus and minus signs. The plot will appear immediately. By default, the variation of temperature is shown in the plot. The dashed lines represent the transition temperatures, solidus, liquidus, and evaporation temperature. You can change which property is plotted by clicking the Quantity drop-down list. If you return to the 3D plot, you can see the coordinates of the line that is plotted. It's the blue line with white dots at the end representing the coordinates. By default, the line runs along the melt pool in the scanning direction. You can change the coordinates to look at the properties at other positions by dragging the line. For instance, we can look at the properties along the melt pool in the Y direction by placing one coordinate where the melt pool is the hottest and dragging the line out in the direction of Y. If you return to the Plot Over Line plot, you will see that it is automatically updated with the result at the new line position. You can also change the coordinates in the Configuration window if you want precise coordinates. For instance, if you want the line in exactly the Y direction. I'll update the x-axis in the second row to match the first to achieve this. You can also reset the coordinates to the default using the Reset button. Step 4a. 
set up a transient with heat source from steady state calculation type. Once you have reviewed your results and see that the steady state simulation runs okay, we are ready to move on to a single track simulation using the transient with heat source from steady state calculation type. Performing a single track process is a common experimental setup to test process parameters before starting the build process. We want to use the same system and data as for the steady state simulation, so we can clone the AM calculator we set up for the steady state simulation. To do this, right click on the AM calculator 1 node and click Clone Tree. This will clone the AM calculator and the plot renderer. We will be calculating transient with heat source from steady state, so select that calculation type. When you do this, you may see the change in the visualization window and additional settings will appear. For example, there are additional options for the geometry and scanning strategy. Additionally, there is an option to add probes which stores data at a specific geometric point. Set the width to 1 micrometer and the length to 3 micrometers. We will leave the heat source, scanning speed, and layer thickness the same. We will use a single track pattern, which is good for experiments on one track of material. You can also simulate bidirectional, which we will do next and unidirectional. Set the margin to 0.75 micrometers. This is the distance from the edge where the beam won't scan. Leave the layer as one. We'll leave the top boundary conditions as they are and set the probe position, which is where in the build the program will measure the temperature. Under probe position, click on the plus sign to add a second probe and click the white boxes to activate them. You can now see a white dot representing the probe coordinates. For probe 1, set X to 1.3 and leave Y as 0.5 and Z as 2.055. For probe 2, set X to 1.7 and leave Y as 0.5 and Z as 2.055. You can also use the Pick Coordinates option to place the probes manually. When all settings are set, right-click on the AM Calculator 2 node and click Perform Now to run the simulation. You can pause the video while the simulation is running. Once the simulation is complete, click on the Plot Renderer 2 node. We will keep the default settings, so click Perform at the bottom center of the screen to show the results of our simulation. As with the steady state simulation, the results can be viewed as a 3D plot, so click the 3D Plot tab in the Visualizations window. The difference between this plot and the first one we looked at is that it is possible to see the evolution of temperature with time and how the laser beam moves in the 3D plot. To see this, click the play button at the top of the configuration window. You can also show a specific time step by selecting a time in the drop-down list. As with the previous calculation, you can view these results as a plot over line. To see the plot over line, go to the plot over line tab and move the line to the position you want to investigate. There is also a third tab called Probe. Since we added probes for this simulation, we can plot the results at the positions of those probes. Probe 1 shows automatically. We can add Probe 2 by clicking the plus sign next to Probe 1 and selecting Probe 2 from the drop-down menu. The probe plot shows the temperature profile for all time steps at the specific point that we selected in the AM calculator. You can also plot surface tension and thermal conductivity. Step 4B. Set up a multi-layer simulation. The single track simulation is now done, 
so we can move on to a more complex simulation. A simulation over multiple layers. This is done with the same simulation type we just used, the transient with heat source from steady state. Multi-layer simulations are useful for understanding how the material behaves during the scanning of multiple layers. We want to use the same system and data as for the single track simulation. Therefore, we can clone AM Calculator 2 that we set up for the single track simulation. Right click on the AM Calculator 2 node and click Clone Tree. Click on the AM Calculator you just cloned. In the configuration window, make sure the transient with heat source from steady state simulation mode is selected. For this simulation, we will change the geometry width and length to 2.5 millimeters. To perform a multi-layer simulation, we need to change the scanning pattern and add layers. There are three different scanning patterns available. Single track, which we used in the previous simulation, bidirectional, which uses multiple tracks that move in two opposite directions, and unidirectional, which uses multiple tracks that all move in the same direction, change the pattern to bidirectional, and set the hatch spacing to 0.14 millimeters, and the lift time to 2.5 e to the negative 4 seconds. Change the number of layers to 2, and set the powder fill time to 2 seconds, and the rotation between layers to 45 degrees. Change the probe positions to the following coordinates. For probe 1, x equals 1.25, y equals 1.25, and Z is left at 2.055. For probe 2, X equals 1.25, Y equals 1.25, and Z equals 2.11. This will place a probe in the middle of each layer. When all settings are set, right-click on the AM Calculator 3 node and click Perform Tree to run the simulation. Note that this simulation takes around 15 minutes to complete, depending on your system. You can pause the video while the simulation is running. Once the simulation is done, click the Plot Renderer 3 node. Keep the default settings and click Perform to populate the result in the Visualizations window. The results are shown as a 3D plot just as for the other calculations. However, it is now possible to see how the laser beam moves in different directions over the two layers. To view this, click on the play button at the top of the configuration window. We can also look at the temperature profile from the probes. To do this, click on the probe tab and change the quantity to temperature for both probes. A plot will appear immediately showing the temperature as a function of time at each of the probe positions. You can drag your mouse over each of the probe lines to get a better view of the probe data. The results can also be viewed as a plot over line, just as with the previous simulations. If you liked this example, don't forget to press the like button and feel free to leave a comment about the type of video you'd like to see next. We are constantly working to create new examples, so make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. You can watch all of our videos at thermocalc.com in the Video Tutorials section.